Joe Goldberg has changed, but not in the way you expect. In nine minutes, I'll explain how Joe Goldberg has evolved as a character over the course of four seasons. Most people think that the show you is formulaic and that Joe hasn't changed. He has, but in very subtle ways. I'll prove it to you. He started out as a bookstore owner who, while creepy, was mostly a stalker who never sought to become a murderer. However, all that changed when he met Beck. Ever since Joe met Beck, he has never been the same. Rather than remaining mostly a stalker who had outbursts of terrible anger and delusion, Joe became something else altogether. Becoming obsessed with Beck and would do anything to be with her. Still not convinced? Joe's obsession with Beck takes control of his thoughts and actions. As Beck becomes more distant from Joe, he becomes increasingly fixated on her and starts to stalk her, going to great lengths to control every aspect of her life. He justifies his action by convincing himself that he is doing it all for love. However, his behavior is clearly unhealthy and dangerous, as it is evident that he has a distorted view of reality. Having random hallucinations of a girl named Candace that he once had a previous relationship with, Joe became even more insane after he killed Beck. He started to lose more grip on reality, and in season 2, I found that he was going to face his biggest trial yet, the return of Candace. In season 2, Joe moves to Los Angeles and starts a new life under a new identity where it seems he escaped and got away with murder. This is where Joe becomes obsessed with Love Quinn, but his past actions continue to haunt him as Candace returned threatening to blackmail him and expose his secrets. In this season, Joe becomes increasingly paranoid and obsessive. Still not convinced? Continuously haunted by his past actions and the memory of Beck, he begins to lash out at those around him. Joe's behavior becomes more erratic and unpredictable, and it becomes clear that he is struggling to maintain his grip on his head and on reality constantly hallucinating and losing his cool. At this point in the season, Joe has failed to overcome Candace and he has failed to get back Love's affection. Joe is so beaten down by this point that he is fully willing to let Candace expose him to the authorities, ending once and for all the cycle of violence, obsession, and running. However, that's when the ultimate shocker comes. Candace uses this opportunity of Joe's submission to reveal to Love that this is Joe's true nature and that he really is a killer. However, plot twist, Love was also a killer the entire time and she knew. So Love takes advantage of Candace's surprise and kills her. But at this point, Joe realizes that Love is a problem and a blessing. With seemingly no other choice since Love is pregnant, he decides to control the situation and problem by marrying Love. After seemingly being at his lowest point by being trapped in a cage by Candace with her threatening to expose him, Joe seems to have come out of that situation for better. He has a baddie that is ride or die. He has a child on the way. So you would think that everything would be on the up and up for Joe. Oh, how wrong you'd be. What if I was to tell you that season three is the lowest point of Joe's entire story? Joe's mental state deteriorates even further as he becomes increasingly isolated and disconnected from reality from the fact of being in a marriage that he does not actually want. Still not convinced? The third season of the series highlights the decline of Joe Goldberg's mental state as he struggles with his marriage to Love Quinn. Love, like Joe, is a killer who embraces her dark side, which leads to Joe resenting her because she reflects a part of himself that he hates. The dynamics of the relationship combined with Love's attention-seeking behavior creates a toxic environment that contributes to the deterioration of Joe's mental state. You see, Love is passionate and attention-needy. Whenever she doesn't get the attention she craves from Joe, she becomes increasingly erratic and violent, which triggers insecurities of Joe. Because once again, this reflects the darker side of Joe's personality, which he absolutely does not like. This in turn further entrenches him in his delusions and destructive behaviors, as he does not want to reflect inward on himself. He struggles to accept his dark side and his marriage with love, someone who embraces their dark side, seems to only amplify that resentment towards himself and towards love. The relationship between Joe and Love is characterized by constant plotting and manipulation with both partners trying to gain control over the other. Their mutual distrust and suspicion only adds to the toxicity of their relationship, which further exacerbates Joe's mental state. This struggle for power makes it difficult for Joe to trust Love and vice versa. Still not convinced? And he's unable to form a healthy and stable relationship with her and also causes Love to seek affection elsewhere by 
constantly reciprocating Theo's advances and at one point actually having sex with him. Still not convinced? Rather than using this season to reflect on his actions and to try to improve himself, Joe becomes further entrenched in his delusions and refuses to stop his cycle of violence. He continues to kill without remorse and his behavior becomes more erratic and dangerous as the season progresses. He refuses to acknowledge the harm he is causing and fails to see the negative impact that his actions are having on his own mental state and the harm he is causing others. For Joe, it is only about him and the love that he constantly seeks. There is no in between. To summarize, Joe has indeed changed throughout the seasons of You. He started out as a delusional guy, very delusional, very prone to rage, but his mental state only got worse as the seasons went on. From his obsession to back to his stress impounding situation where he was being chased by Candace and pursued by her, and then being obsessed with love, only to find out that love his whole entire time was someone just as psychotic as him, which immediately turned him off, and then only to be trapped within the marriage because she had a baby and Joe's a protector he protects things that he loves so he loved that child and so he had no choice but to be married but throughout the seasons you could see that he was not really into the idea of being married to love he was doing it only out of obligation not to mention throughout the entire marriage it was just them manipulating and trying to outthink one another they didn't trust one another and they kept cheating on one another and it ended in a finale that was just a complete mayhem still not convinced i will never get over the words that joe said to love joe leaves season three broken mutilated and musing about the last words that love ever said to him because of this even though joe entrenched himself further in his delusions and refused to change he still recognized that there's some validity and love's last words to him love's last words to him shook him to his very core and it didn't change him but he's only trying to prove her wrong out of spite which is why he spared theo he spared the swigging couple and he dropped off his son for adoption because he doesn't want his son involved in this life that leads us all the way to season four where we find joe working as a professor called jonathan moore and he's just a tired man nursing his broken heart he wants to prove that love was wrong he's only acting out of spite joe is now being hunted he's being stalked by someone who he can't figure out immediately this is someone that knows his past and that wants to rub it in Joe's face that he can't figure out who they are and then Joe suddenly finds himself surrounded by people that are just as bad as him Joe is no longer the biggest baddest wolf so now where does that leave Joe a guy that's trying to change surrounded by a bunch of bad actors much like himself well that leads him to quite possibly the biggest change that I believe he will take in season four the season's not over yet Joe will have to confront the stalker and joe will have to recognize that this stalker is perhaps just as smart as he was not like love love even though she was just as sadistic as joe she wasn't as smart as joe this other person is as smart as joe and joe will have to look within himself joe will have to self-reflect in order to defeat this person that's where we're left off with in season four Joe making the greatest change as a character. And in addition to this, I want to answer something that I addressed in the beginning of the video. Joe is not formulaic. Season 1 was a classic rom-com with a surprise twist of a thriller. Season 2 was much of the same, but with the bigger twist that the girl that Joe has been dreaming about, the girl of his dreams, was just as deranged as he was. Season 3 was all about a suburban film noir. Darkness murder and mystery and now season four we're in a good old classic who done it baby Woo -ya! now joe has to figure out among all these bad actors who knows him and who has it out for him so if you enjoyed this video go ahead and subscribe bye